Hello, this is Dr. Mears. Today we are going to be taking a look at surface area. And I would like to inform you before we be begin that some of you uh, doing my project have received these two-dimensional nets. These are nets. It's when we take a solid, uh, such as a cube, and we cut it, and then we lay it out flat so it goes from three dimensions to two dimensions. That's when we get the net of the solid. And some of you receive these. These nets, I'm going to be using different dimensions. So if you actually measured this net out, it would be one and a half. But for ease of doing our video and finding surface area, I have stuck with um, numbers that are not decimals, just whole numbers. So these numbers in the actual measurement of the pictures are different. So please do not use these numbers in your project because this is not four inches. This is about an inch and a half. So please be careful. These are not drawn to scale. Um, so if I use four inches, this is not four inches here. All right, so let's find surface area. Surface area is exactly what it says, area of a surface. Um, and so what you're going to have to realize is you're going to be needing area formulas. So for a cube, we have all sides are going to be equal because they are all squares. So we need to make sure that we have area of a square. Now, if you don't have your area formulas handy, um, what I would suggest is I'm going to flash this picture in front of you right now. These are all the formulas for area labeled by shape um, and all of the labels given for all of the variables that I use. So if you'd like to pause here and either take a screenshot or snippet or a picture with your camera or write them down, I would suggest you do so. Okay, back to our cube. So we have to realize what shape we have. We have a square. So to find the area of the surface, such as in a way that we would be painting this, I wanna know how much surface I'm going to cover. So since these all these sides are equal, we can just put in four inches. So since this is a square, it is four inches by four inches. Same thing here, four inches by four inches. Same thing here, four inches by four inches. And I mean, we can go around and around labeling four inches. But the biggest thing is that if this square is going to have a certain area, all of these are going to be equal in that area. So let's just find the area of this first one. We have length, which is four, times width, which is four. So that area equals, and remember, these are in inches. So we're doing four inches times four inches, which gives us 16 inches squared. Remember, inches times inches is inches squared. We have gone from the 3D to the 2D. Um, and so we have inches squared. And what I would say for those of you doing your project, you have these, you would put in the area. Please, this is not four inches on your project. You will have to measure your project yourselves. This is just meant for the video. These measurements are just for the video. So let's put an area as 16 inches squared. And I ask you to label all of your areas. So that's what I would do here. And the reason why I'm asking the, my students doing the project to label all of your areas is because you're going to have to find the outside of your castle or the outside of your dream house. Um, and that's really easy once you see all the areas labeled to find the surface area. So let's say we were going to paint this entire cube, which is this one. We would paint the outside. Well, how much are we painting? What we do to find the area of the whole entire surface is just to add these together. Um, so surface area, and I'm just going to denote that by SA, SA is just surface area, is to add all of them together. So 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16. And so our surface area is going to come out to be 96 inches squared. So if I had to get paint, I know how much paint I would need. I would need to paint 96 inches squared, and I would go and convert that to how many gallons of paint I would actually need. Um, and so, yes, some of you may be saying in your head, could I have multiplied 6 by 16 because that's how many we have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And, yes, you would get the same exact as inches squared. So, and these are all inches squared. Um, when you do do your measurements, it's always going to put in units. Absolutely fine. So either way works, you're still going to come out with the surface area.
and that was a cube. Let's look at the surface area of a rectangle. So now of a rectangle, we have two squares here, um, and we have one, two, three, four rectangles. So if we find the area of this square, it's going to be the same as this. And if we find the area of this rectangle, these three will be the same. So let's go through. I have two inches by eight inches. Again, this is not the correct. These are not the correct measurements. You have to use a ruler um, when you're doing the project. Please use a ruler to measure these out. These measurements are only for the video. So we have here, we have two units. So this is going to be two inches. So that's this right here. And then the side, how tall, this is two inches as well. Here is two inches and here is, as it says, eight inches. So let's find the area of this one first. We have two inches times two inches and that's gonna give us four inches squared. And again, labeling everything is recommended. So four inches squared, four inches squared. Let's do the area of this rectangle two inches times eight inches, and the area is 16 inches squared. So let's put those areas in. And yes, if we wanted to paint this entire cube, then we would add all of these up. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's find the surface area by adding them all up. So we have four plus another four inches, inches squared, squared, plus 16 inches squared, plus another 16 inches squared. So our surface area equals, and in the calculator, Seventy-two inches squared. Now, could you have done this another way? I mean, could you have said, well, we have two four inches squares and we have four 16 inch squares. And if we add them together, can we get the same answer? And the answer is yes. There are multiple ways of doing this. So let me show you that. There are multiple ways of doing this. So we had two four inches and we had one, two, three, four 16 inches. So if you would like to combine them, just using multiplication. Remember, all multiplication is is repeated addition. So we are repeating the four twice. We're repeating the 16 four times. Either way you want to show your work, please show your work, whether it's writing it all out or whether it's combining it and using multiplication. You still get the same surface area, which is 72 inches squared. Okay, let's move on. Cylinder. Okay, here we have a cylinder. So we have for this cylinder, we have two, one, two circles, and we have a rectangle. The area of the circle is pi r squared, and the area of this rectangle, we're going to call it the curved surface of a cylinder um, because we don't have the length. All we have is the circumference, which is 2 pi r. We have the circumference of this circle, and the circumference is going to be equal to the length of this rectangle. And so that's why we're calling it the area of the curved surface of a cylinder. So that's going to get us this one. Um, but first, let's do the area of a circle. Let's look to see what we have. So we have the radius here. This is going to be four inches. And that's what we need for area of a circle. So area equals pi times four squared. And this is in inches. So area equals pi times 16 inches squared. And I asked you to take pi to be 3.14 for our measurements. So we are going to multiply 3.14 times 16 inches squared. And we get area of 50.24 inches squared. So I would write that in, area equals 50.24 inches squared. All right, this circle and this circle are going to be equivalent. So I can write that in, inches squared. Okay, now we have the area of this rectangle. We don't have, we have the height. This is six inches. So this is six inches, but we don't have this length. So this length we're going to measure 
we're going to actually take the circumference of this circle. It's kind of if we roll unwrap, if we cut our circle right here and unraveled it, it would be this length. So the circumference is 2 times pi times r, and that's how we get the area, length times width, or length times width. But since we don't have length, we have to utilize what we have, which is our circle's circumference. So let's find this area here. So area equals 2 times pi. Our radius is still 4 inches. It's the same exact as it's been. And then 4 inches, and then times 6 inches. So taking uh, pi as 3.14, I can simply multiply all of this out in my calculator. 2 times 3.14 times 4 times 6. And then we're going to be getting 150.72. Inches squared. So we are going to be at 150.72 inches squared um, for this surface area of just this rectangle. That's the area of just that rectangle. So what do we need to do? We need to add up our areas of the two circles and of our rectangle. So surface area equals 50.24 plus 50.24 plus 150.72, all in inches squared, inches squared. So our surface area equals 251.2 inches squared. So if we were to paint this cylinder, paint it, paint it, paint it, we'd be painting 251 0.2 inches squared. Just moving that over for you. Here we go. Okay, next one. Surface area of a cone. Very similar to our surface area of our um, cylinder in that we have the area of the circle, but we're also going to need to have this area too, and this is called the area of the curved surface of a cone. Same first few words, but just now it's of a cone. So we have to do these two. Let's look to see what measurements we are given. We are given a diameter of four inches. So, I mean, not a diameter, my apologies, a radius of four inches, and we are given a slant height. Remember, this is L. L is going to be our slant height. So this is going to be L right here. This is eight inches, our slant height right here. That's what L equals. So knowing those two, let's first find the area of our circle. Area of our circle is going to be 3.14 times four inches squared. So area equals three point, oh, we, have, we know that, 50.24. We just, we just calculated that out. How convenient that we use the same measurement. So area equals 50.24 inches squared. Now we need to do the cone. So area of a surface of a cone, pi times radius times slant height. So area of this cone is going to be 3.14 times 4 times 8 inches, inches. So area is going to equal multiplying this all out, 3.14 times 4 times 8 is 100.48 inches squared. Area equals 100.48 inches squared. So making sure that you are, you are doing the area, putting it into your certain shape, putting it into your certain shape. Now we can find surface area really easy. We can say, okay, we have 100.48 inches squared for that curved surface of a cone. We have 50.24 inches squared for that circle. Adding them together, we are going to get 150.72 inches squared. Oh, for our surface area. There we go. Excellent. Any questions? All right, next, pyramid. So I'm hoping you're getting the kind of the gist of this. 
um, where we're finding the area of each one and then we're adding it up. If we have multiples, if we find the area of this one, it's going to be the same. Um, here we have, what, do we, what figures are we? We have a square and we have a triangle. So we need area of a square, area of a triangle. We have different measurements here, so we have to make sure we're paying attention. So the base, which is our square, is four inches by four inches. So that's down here, four inches by four inches. The height, and this is going to be four inches here. They're all four inches. The height is also the height of our triangles. So this is going to be 10 inches. So this is our height height so this is our height of our triangle because if you folded it up the triangles have have to reach up to that height um actually i'm trying to think if that's a true story and that's not a true story so that is not a true story so let's erase this and let's say that we I'm like that is not a true story because this is going to be the slant here um so you are going to measure this out anyways using a ruler so i'm not going to get into the pythagorean theorem right now <laughs> um so i take this back um the height is a little bit different than the height of our side of our triangle here so we would actually need to use the pythagorean theorem to find this blue height which is the height of this triangle um because we have a right triangle inside. So I do not want to get into that because you will be able to use rulers to measure this out. And if you didn't, that is another lesson on how to find that height of the triangle inside using the Pythagorean theorem. But that is not this lesson today. Okay, so you are going to be provided with the height of this triangle. So we can go and find first the area of the square. Area is length times width area equals four inches by four inches. We've done this before, 16 inches squared. Area equals 16 inches squared. All right, let's find the height of this triangle. Height of the triangle is one half base times height. So area equals one half. Our base is four. So our base is here. And that is part of that, that square. So four inches times our height is here. And you will have measured that with a ruler. We're not gonna be using the Pythagorean theorem, so that's 10. So area equals 20 inches squared. So you fill that in, area equals 20 inches squared, area equals 20 inches squared. And to find the surface area, yes, you add them all up. 20 inches squared plus 20 inches squared plus, and if you would like to use repeated addition and use your multiplication, rules that is absolutely fine we have four 20 inch squares and we have one 16 inch squares so that's going to be 80 plus 16. so our surface area for this is 96 inches squared 20 40 60 80 plus 90 plus 16 is 96 inches squared okay so tetrahedron so here you go, I didn't include, this is what it would look like if it was 3D, here is your net. I didn't include any of the measurements on the outside because this is where you do use your ruler um, to measure. I am going to just give you generic measurements right here um, because as you can see, we have one, two, three, four triangles. Um, they are gonna be the same in measurement. Um, so this is equilateral all around. So let's do a um, let's do a base of let's say six inches. So this is six inches. So all around is six inches, and then um, let's do this as actually let's do five. Oh my bad. Let's do five, and then let's do four inches. Okay. And so I have two here. I didn't mean to have two. I meant to only have one. Um, you'll, you will have received two. Actually, we could measure this out. I know I'm taking a little bit more time. My apologies. Let's just do a quick measurement because for my students, this is what you would be doing. Um, you'd be measuring in inches. And so, you know what? Let's measure this out. This is one and three-fourths. So this is area, the... 
This is height of 1.75 inches. And let's go across two inches. Perfect. There we go. I just gave you a measurement, 1.75 and two inches. So let's find the area of one of these triangles because they are all going to be the same. So one half two times 1.75 inches, inches. Area equals 1.75 inches squared. So all of these area, 1.75 inches squared. You get the gist of this. All right, adding them all up. Surface area equals, you know, we have one, two, three, four. So you can write this down four times if you want or you can just simply multiply by four. Surface area equals, I like multiplying four times 1.75, and we're gonna get seven inches squared. There we go. Okay. And lastly, surface area of window cutouts. So in your project, um, you may have the face of a cube showing or a rectangle. And let's say you wrote your area is going to be 16 inches squared, just from our previous one. And so you do have the other part of your rectangular prism over here, and you know it's all connected, but this is in the back, we don't need this. The only thing that you're looking at is this front face. This is, you're gonna have to find surface area of the outside. So we don't need any other measurements. And so if this is your outside wall, this is what you would be, you know, if you were standing in this room right here and you were looking out, let's say that you wanted to put a big, beautiful window in there. But here's the thing. You're only going to be painting this part. So you're not going to be painting 16 inches squared anymore. You're only going to be painting around the window. You don't want to paint the window. And so here is your little window and it's beautiful. So what you have to do is you have to take out your ruler. Okay. So, and you have to measure it in inches. And let's just say that we have, let's say that this is two inches by three inches okay so your window and I'm just gonna draw it one more time so same picture so what we're doing is we have two inches by three inches and so this is what we're cutting out so we know originally it was 16 well let's find the area of this the area of our window is three inches times two inches. So our area is gonna be three times six inches squared. So in here is six inches squared. So let's go put that back. So area is 16, in, oh, sorry. Area is six inches squared. So what we wanna do is we can't use this anymore. We can't use 16 inches squared because we're not painting the window. So we're gonna take the original 16 inches squared and we're gonna subtract out the window because you're cutting it out. So we're gonna subtract that six because we're, we're, taking the, we're taking it out. We don't wanna paint it. So all you do is you find the area of the window and you subtract it. So we're left with painting 10 inches squared. So this is what we would be painting so we subtracted the window area. And that's how you find surface area of windows. If you wanted a window, if you got fancy and you wanted a, ooh, a right window, that would be pretty cool in a castle. You would just to take the area of the triangle, subtract it out. If you wanted a trapezoid, take that, subtract it out. And that's how you find surface area of all of these different solids. I hope this helped. Let me know when you have questions.